guys, I really did not want to record this intro in the car, but we are trying to get a very difficult museum pass. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the museum pass and why it is a huge money saving option if you live here in Miami-Dade County. And I'm going to reveal what the most difficult museum pass to get is because that's what we're going after right now. It is bright and early, 9.36 in the morning. I am not usually out on the road this time, but I'm after that museum pass. All right, guys, this is for my money-saving people and people on a budget. I feel you guys, a lot of things are going up. Rent is going up. Gas is coming down slowly, but it's still overpriced in my opinion. So I want you guys to listen up if you fall into that category. I love giving you guys content that saves you money. And I think this might be one of the most valuable things I have ever uploaded on this channel. So if you live here in Miami-Dade County, you probably have a library card. If you don't, you're gonna wanna rush and get one by the end of this video. I'm not telling you to check out a book, no. A lot of people think that the library is just free Wi-Fi, free access to books you can check out. And uh, as of lately, no overdue fines for books, which is really great. But the library is not just for that, at least here in Miami-Dade. They have this thing called Museum Pass, which is very damn good in my opinion. There's a list of museums, Florida State Parks, Zoo Miami, places like that that have agreed to partner with the Miami-Dade library system. So people who get this Museum Pass will have free access to said attraction. And the way it works is you go into the library and you check it out like a book. It's literally like a piece of paper with a receipt on it that tells you which museum or which attraction in general you are going to get access to. You can't just get access to all of them, by the way, so you have to pick and choose which one you wanna get. And there is a set amount of availability for each of them. So you wanna do your research and you wanna pretty much wake up early in the morning like I did today. And the beautiful thing about this is that the museum pass is not just for one person. Like you would probably think if you check it out, you're gonna get access to it. Everyone else with you is gonna have to pay. No, four people, a family of four, they don't have to be your family, but four people, two adults and two kids, will have free access to the museum of your choice, granted that it's on the list. Completely free, no strings attached. I wanna emphasize that. You just need a library card and some time and planning, and you will have free access to the museums that you would otherwise pay a lot of money for. So that's what this video will be about. We're gonna head into the library. I'm parked outside of it right now. I don't think you can see it's too bright. And we're gonna run in there and we're gonna demand a museum pass. We're not gonna demand it, I'm gonna say it nicely. But we're gonna go in there and bring in my library card because like I said, you need it. And hopefully we have some luck. I have a specific museum in mind that I wanna go to. I picked probably the most expensive one. <laughs> Uh, do you have any of those museum passes by any chance? Uh, Frost Science, if it's available. Oh, there you go, my love. Thank you. Yourself. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Let's go, baby. We got the museum pass, and they gave it to us for the Frost Museum of Science. It is the most difficult one to get access to, in my opinion. I've been trying and trying. Woo! It is due on the 31st, so you do have about seven days to use it and return it. You can only go once, I believe, in those seven days. But wow, this is good for a family of four and it's just me. Should I feel bad? I am so excited, guys. We are literally right outside of the Museum of Science and have our museum pass on us. I'm going to document the process of going inside so I can show you whether it's like as easy as just waving this and they'd be like, come right in. Or they have to actually like analyze it and make sure you have the right one because I think you get the booklet regardless of where you're going, but inside of it is a receipt, just like any library checkout receipt that says the title, which would be the title of the book, Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science Museum Pass. So that is the specific one we are allowed to go into today. All right, let's see how easy this is. So we're passing the ticket boost right now, normally where you would buy the tickets. I'll tell you later how much we are saving with this. Here's the museum pass once again. Hello, I have this. Yes, so you're gonna go to the ticket center, they're gonna pick it up. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it isn't just like walk up and, and show it. You actually have to go to the ticket center. Hello. Hello. I have the museum pass. Okay, so with the museum pass, you get free um, general admission to the museum. Okay. It doesn't come with the planetarium, but if you want to watch a show, it's five dollars. So here's your ticket, wristband, and map. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Okay, so some things to talk about. Once I get inside, we got our ticket. 
Good? Thank you. All right, we've officially made it inside for the free 99. It was a bit tricky because you can't just wave the pass and go in. You actually have to hand them the pass at the ticket center. So this is probably the case everywhere else. And they will keep the museum pass. I thought I had to go back to the library and return it, but it is just like a disposable pass that they probably have a lot of at the library and they just issue it as is. So when they say they only have like one pass in stock, it's just one that they're willing to give because those are actually disposable. We are inside the Frost Museum of Science. As you see there, we paid zero dollars to come in here using our museum pass from the library. They did say if I wanted to watch a planetarium show, it is five dollars extra. I went ahead and skipped out on it because I just want to show you guys that you can get in for free without having money at all. And in fact, you could bring four people, two adults and two kids out to some of these attractions. All right, so I'm gonna cue some B-roll of the museum because I don't want this video to be entirely about the museum, but if you've never been, I wanna show you guys a little bit of some highlights. And then we'll find another spot to sit and talk about the museum pass in more detail, some pros, some cons, and my personal pro tips. And I'll share with you guys the full list of uh, museums you'll have access to for free. So let's go. So I've been exploring the entire museum for a little over an hour now. I have a video coming out of this exact museum giving you guys a quick tour of the place. So be sure to look out for that video. But let's go ahead and dive into the important details of using the museum pass. First of all, let's hypothetically speaking, you're bringing four people without the museum pass to the Frost Museum of Science. Keep in mind, you do have to pay for parking. It is a flat rate of $15. So while you are getting in for free with the museum pass, Parking is not free. Now I do recommend parking over at the park behind me. I will show you guys through B-roll what I mean by that. I am paying $5 an hour. So if you plan on spending three hours, then go ahead and park down here because it'll be $15 for three hours. You might as well park closer. But if you're gonna be here for just an hour, two hours, it'll be $10 at most. And that's what I did today. So I'm only paying $10. I was trying to be here for an hour, $5, but got carried away. And I also lost my sunglasses. So you'll see it in the video how I lost it bummer but let's go ahead and talk about the price of coming here without the museum pass a family of four so two adults and two kids i actually did the math and i'm also including taxes not including parking so throw in 15 dollars on top of that if you do decide to park here with taxes and two adults two kids it is 117 dollars and 48 cents so right off the bat you are saving over a hundred dollars using this advice of the museum pass 100 free just pay parking I do have some samples for other places. This is again, including taxes for four people, two adults, two kids. If you're going to the Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, which is on the list, $74.90 without the pass. And then Zoo Miami, $89.66 without the pass. Now keep in mind, there are some restrictions for the museum pass, such as Zoo Miami, it is a great example. You can only use the pass on Wednesdays. So if you are a family where both adults work, Monday through Friday, then you're gonna be stuck paying for it on weekends, but if you can make the time for the zoo on Wednesday, take the day off. If you're coming by yourself, or as a couple, you can use the pass without bringing kids. I'm here by myself using a pass that is up to four people. Just used it for myself today. By the way, if you're appreciating the huge amount of money I am saving you guys, go ahead and leave a like. It helps the channel, it helps people find this video. The algorithm just does its magic and pushes this video out to everybody who needs to know about this. And consider subscribing and hitting that bell button so you don't miss a video. Another restriction to look out for is, first of all, read the fine print before you go and rush to your local library to find the pass. Because Vizcaya, for example, is only available through Museum Pass from June to September. So basically the summer months, and you're gonna be stuck out of luck if you try to do this after September and you're stuck in that window where they're not really honoring it. So we've talked about the past. You've seen me put it to use here at the Museum of Science, saving a lot of money. I'm saving $30, by the way, just me alone coming here for free. So I've talked to you guys about the benefits. Now, what are the drawbacks? What are the downsides of this? First of all, when you're paying to go to a museum or any attraction, you walk up and you just pay. This is kind of a hassle in a way. You have to kind of obsess over looking at availabilities. You have to go on their website and constantly refresh. Wake up early in the morning prior to the library opening 
and seeing which place you want to go to the hardest one in my opinion is this place i've had zero out of 50 availability for the past week and today i decided to wake up and try to make things happen they had about nine when i first got to the library and then a couple minutes literally a couple minutes after i checked out the museum pass it went down to three so people are going and waking up early you got to beat them to it if you want to come to a hard to get place like this one now history miami for example that is a good place but it's also very cheap so it's not really sought after via museum pass but you can get it they have over i think over 120 available across all 50 libraries so that one is a lot easier to get but again it is only like 10 bucks to go and on groupon you can find some deals usually as cheap as six dollars to go there now zoo miami the trick to getting zoo miami a lot of people are just going to wake up on wednesday because that's the only day they honor it and they're going to go to the library on wednesday keep in mind you can have the pass for seven days what does that mean wake up on a monday wake up on a tuesday wake up on the friday before you have seven days to use it so go on an off day where they're not honoring it and just hold on to the pass until that wednesday and then go ahead and use it so most people are thinking wake up wednesday check it out go to the zoo and use it don't do that think ahead and think outside the box because i've taken notes i've actually tried to go to zoo miami to do this video but it's every wednesday and it's just going to take forever to do this video I've woken up on Wednesday and seen the numbers just plummet as the library opens. And that brings me to my other downside for the museum pass. There's no reservation system. It is first come, first serve. So as you're driving to the library thinking you're going to get the pass and you put the car and park right outside of it, there could be someone inside right at the moment you park that car checking out the only museum pass at the library, leaving you stuck having to find another library wasting gas going around the city. And then it might happen again when you get to the next library so that's what i don't like there's no reservation system i think it would be a pretty organized system i don't think it would be a mess if it was ever a reservation system so keep in mind that you will be challenged depending on where you want to go and depending on the day of the week you will be challenged and it will kind of be a hassle trying to rush to get these museum passes that is the only complaint i really have i think the benefits outweigh the downsides i mean you are saving a ton of money coming here with your entire family so there are going to be some challenges it's not going to be easy breezy trying to get the museum pass if you're saving a lot of money you got to work for it and uh, that is the museum pass hopefully you guys found this useful again leave a like subscribe if you enjoyed this video museum pass all the information the full list i'm gonna throw up on the screen the full list of places available keep in mind some are not available at the time of this recording but when you do see it it might be available but for the most part frost museum of science is available so with that said thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one